Commercial milk use in ESCON. How important is drinking milk? Milk is compared to nectar, which one can drink to become immortal. Of course, simply drinking milk will not make one immortal, but it can increase the duration of one's life. Prabhupada purport to Srimad Bhagavatam 8.6.12 Question. Does this statement apply to all milk? Prabhupada compared purity to milk on thousands of occasions. In his mind, milk was synonymous with purity. However, modern commercial milk is far from pure and therefore cannot be referenced in this connection. I cannot manufacture gold. I cannot show any jugglery. But if there is any credit, then the only credit is I don't adulterate. That's all. The pure milk. I don't show my expert service by adding water in it. Lecturer in Bhagavad Gita 327, Madras, January 1st, 1976. Milk is undoubtedly very good and nourishing. But when it is touched by the mouth of a snake, it is no longer nourishing. Rather, it becomes a source of death. Srimad Bhagavatam 1341 purport. What's in commercial milk? Pituitary hormones, steroid hormones, hypothalamic thyroid and parathyroid hormones, gastrointestinal peptides, growth factors, as well as fat, cholesterol, allergenic proteins, blood pus, antibiotics, bacteria, viruses, pain, sadness and anger. In India, 68% of commercial milk is contaminated. More than two-thirds of milk samples tested in a cross-country health survey in India were found to be contaminated with additives such as detergent and fertilizer, reports the National. Some samples also were found to contain more alarming substances such as detergent, the bleaching agent hydrogen peroxide, and the fertilizer urea. Also, the addition of water not only reduces the nutritional value of milk, but contaminated water may also pose health risks, India News Report. Now, if milk is contaminated in a country where the cow is revered, what can we expect of other countries? But the cow benefits if we offer her milk to Krishna, says some Hare Krishnas. If one were to make a calculation of how many cows, calves that might be benefited, you would realize that it is merely a drop in the ocean of the actual number of cows, calves that are not able to offer their milk to Krishna. But Krishna loves cows, says some Hare Krishnas. Yes, Krishna loves cows, but he also loves cats, dogs and horses, but we don't offer their milk because it is not considered sattvic pure. But based on the logic used by these same devotees, if we did, the dogs, cats and horses would be liberated. Not all milk is sattvic. Krishna does not need any food, but he agrees to accept sattvic foods if they are offered with bhakti devotion. Question. Is contaminated commercial milk sattvic and therefore offerable? Prabhupada claims that all sinful activities are a direct result of milk that is forcibly taken from a cow. And yet many ISKCON devotees persist with the rationalization that by purchasing stolen milk, they are somehow immune from this sin. What about the calves? Yes, some cows will benefit if somehow their milk is offered to Krishna. But what about the tens of millions of calves that end up on people's dinner plates as a direct result of one's choice to purchase commercial dairy products? And then there is the fact that dairy cows are routinely raped by men wearing gloves. The cow is giving milk, like mother. Why should you kill it? This is humanity to kill the mother? So in this way, we are encroaching the rights of others and we are becoming subject to be punished by God. Room Conversation, August 10, 1976, Tehran. The important thing to note here 
is that the cow is giving milk with love like a mother. However, in modern dairy farms, the milk is forcibly stolen using suction machines. Such cows are not acting like mothers, but are like slaves. Thoughts are energy. Just as it is important to have the right thoughts while preparing meals for Krishna in order for the meal to be offerable, we should also take into account that commercial dairy cows will be sad, angered and anxious, and most often in pain while their milk is being stolen. The cow stands with tears in her eyes while the Sudra milkman draws milk from the cow artificially and when there is no milk, the cow is sent to be slaughtered. These greatly sinful acts are responsible for all the troubles in present society. Shumad Bhagavatam 117.3 Purport Dairy equals veal equals beef. The dairy industry is married to the cow slaughter industry. One industry cannot exist or prosper without the other. Every year in the United States, more than 40 million cows are killed for human consumption. Many of these cows come directly from the dairy industry once they stop producing a sufficient quantity of milk. Leather Products Shula Prabhupada considered it violent to buy or use leather products. Similarly, commercial dairy products are directly connected with a very violent industry. Eating simple food. By keeping regular habits and eating simple food, any man can maintain his health. Overeating, over sense gratification, over dependence on another's mercy, and artificial standards of living sap the very vitality of human energy. Therefore, the duration of life is shortened. Shrimad Bhagavatam 1.1.10 A little milk. Eating is a basic principle for keeping one's health. Therefore, Bhagavad Gita says, Yuktahara Vihara, simply eat to keep fit. That is one important business of those in Krishna consciousness. Generally, hepatitis is a disease on account of eating too many fatty and spicy foods. So we must always use simple food stuff and a little milk. Not very much puris and halava and sweet balls and sweet rice like that. Letter to Madhud Visa, 15th of September, 1971. A typical sadhu's daily intake of dairy is one glass of hot milk at night. Having dairy in every meal is a clear example of how Iskorn is not living in harmony with nature. But milk develops the finer brain tissues, say some Hare Krishnas. Where is the evidence that modern day commercial milk will develop these finer brain tissues? When Srila Prabhupada or the Vedas glorified milk and its amazing health benefits, both were referring to milk offered with love by protected cows living healthy natural lives. Not all milk is the same. It is important to understand the distinct difference between traditional milk flowing from protected and loved cows and commercial milk that is artificially extracted from abused cows. One is pure and given with love, the other is full of toxic chemicals and emotional pain. Milk offered with love is customized. Even while breastfeeding, a human mother's milk can change according to the needs of the child. The same happens for a cow that feels happy and lovingly offers her milk to the milker who gently touches her. Such milk is healthy for the milker. Lactose intolerance. Although there is substantial support both from Prabhupada's teachings and the Vedic literature about the benefits of consuming pure dairy, the fact remains that a large percentage of the world population is lactose intolerant. Up to 71% for Sicily to more than 90% in some African and Asian countries. Claiming that milk is necessary for spiritual advancement 
is akin to Christians claiming that one has to surrender to Jesus to be saved. It's ludicrous. When the Vedas were originally spoken, lactose intolerance was probably not so widespread. And of course, there was no such thing as milk contaminated with growth hormones and antibiotics. Apparently, lactose intolerance is not a problem when people consume raw milk. Prepared in various ways. I have noted your question carefully and regarding your question about prashadam recipes. Krishna is offered foodstuff in goodness. The foodstuffs in the mode of goodness are wheat, rice, pulse, beans and peas, sugar, honey, butter and all milk preparations, vegetables, flowers, fruits, grains. So these foods can be offered in any shape but prepared in various ways by the intelligence of the devotees. So you can make your own recipe if you like, so long as the ingredients are within this group. Krishna is not Indian. Therefore, it is not absolutely necessary to offer Krishna a dairy-based Indian diet if there is no pure ahimsa milk available. Prabhupada told us that we can cook according to local taste, and this is exactly why he gave permission for the Italian devotees to make their own pasta. Not all sugar is in goodness. Prabhupada often mentioned that sugar was in the mode of goodness, but the fact is most sugars, especially white processed sugar, is toxic to our health and processed using charcoal filters made with bones, making it tamasic impure. The same logic applies to milk. In a room conversation in Vrindavan in 1977, while on his deathbed and sipping fresh milk from a protected cow, Prabhupada said, If I drink this milk twice, morning and evening, I think I can avoid any food. Tamal Krishna, you can what? Prabhupada, avoid any food. Tamal Krishna, you don't like fruit juice? Prabhupada, I mean to say, I can drink in the meantime, but by simply drinking this milk, I can live healthy. Can one survive on milk? The late Gopinath Acharya Prabhu, a Prabhupada disciple in Australia, once stated, Fresh raw milk is nectar and increases the duration of life. A raw milk diet cures practically every chronic disease. There is no alternative to this most important food in the world. Recently, I lived for two years exclusively on fresh raw milk from my own cows, which I looked after with their calves. My health improved dramatically. But Krishna requires milk, say some Hare Krishnas. No, Krishna never said that. Krishna only asks for our devotion, and in fact, milk is not even mentioned by Krishna, including the famous Bhagavad Gita quote, If one offers me with love and devotion a leaf, a flower, fruit or water, I will accept it. Bhagavad Gita 926 Krishna only wants bhakti, devotion. Bhakti or love is a verb, a doing word. We demonstrate our bhakti through practical actions. Since eating is the most fundamental thing we all do, selecting and preparing food with devotion is critical to spiritual advancement. Devotion begins from the time we grow or purchase ingredients. We should offer the best to Krishna. There is no expenditure. He is agreeable to accept a little fruit, a little flour, a little water. Simply, he wants your devotional love. That's all. He's not hungry. Of course, this society is, according to our capacity, offering Krishna the best foodstuff. Not that because he says fruit, flour, leaf or water, therefore we offer him only fruit, flour, leaf or water. No. We offer him to our best capacity, the best the best foodstuff. That should be the motto. Lecture on Srimad Bhagavatam 215 Los Angeles, August 13, 1972. But what if a temple does not have land to protect cows? Iskon has two options for acquiring a himsa dairy. One, 
it can protect cows and create its own source of pure milk, or two, form a cooperative of devotee consumers and approach organic dairies and sponsor cows with the condition that the cows are never abused or killed, thus ensuring the farmer of a guaranteed income. In other words, Yukta Varagya, using things in the service of Krishna. Prabhupada often gave the example of the field mouse and the snake to illustrate this point. The field mouse spends a lot of effort creating a nice home in the field, but soon the snake comes along and eats the mouse and takes over the home. In the same way, it is perfectly legitimate and pragmatic for devotees to cooperate with small-scale organic dairy farmers to solve their community's dairy requirements in a non-violent way. It is unjustified, callous and morally wrong to ignore the fact that over 10 billion cows are killed annually, most of which come from the dairy industry, just to satisfy one's selfish desires for dairy. Every time we sit down to eat, we are making a political statement with our dollars. If McDonald's felt that consumers preferred soy burgers, they would provide them. Similarly, if consumers demanded a himsa milk, the farmers would comply. There are six accomplices in the abuses of the dairy industry. When animals are killed in a slaughterhouse, six people connected with the killing are responsible for the murder. The person who gives permission for the killing the person who kills, the person who helps, the person who purchases the meat, the person who cooks the flesh, and the person who eats it, all become entangled in the killing. Srimad Bhagavatam 4.25.8 Why wouldn't this scriptural quote not apply to commercial milk? In the production of milk, Male calves are routinely separated from their mothers and then slaughtered. After three to four years of intensive milk production, the mother is also slaughtered. Purchasing commercial milk directly supports this cruel business model. Real cow protection equals ahimsa, non-violent milk. What do some leaders in the Hare Krishna movement have to say? I don't consume any dairy unless its source is compatible to what we have in Krishna Valley. Blood milk, milk from the commercial industry, is not for me, but I travel a lot, and ahimsa or cruelty-free milk is not widely available, so therefore I am mostly dieting as a vegan. Sivaram Swami If you can become a vegetarian and not take milk from the commercial dairy industry, but only from life-protected cows, Krishna dairy, then you are contributing to lessening the demand for meat and commercial dairy products. The less demand, the less supply, and the less suffering from other cow. Balabhadra Prabhu Srila Prabhupada told his disciples not to offer anything to Radha Krishna made by the Kamis and to sell the commercial dairy sour cream at any cost. Do you think he would consider commercial dairy milk infested with pus, hormones, chemicals and MRSA suitable to offer to Sri Sri Radha Govinda? Kuala Rupa Prabhu Commercial dairy is not worthy of offering to Krishna. The fact that some devotees feel that it is just shows how much they are enslaved by their tongues. Priya Radha Prabhu How can devotees of Krishna, the cowherd boy, be involved in killing cows by purchasing milk from the store? Jagannath Priya If you like this presentation, please sign our petition to demand that the governing body of ISKCON ban the use of commercial dairy in all ISKCON temples.